the best way to learn anything is to see how is it done. Okay, so here we are, example one, a basic river crossing type of question. Okay, now let's read the question quickly and uh, filter out the important information from here. Okay, now as you read, you always look out for uh, terms like this. Okay, a canoeist, paddle, okay, one point one um, meter per second in still water. Okay, cross a river 20 meters wide. We river is flowing at a speed of 1.5 meters per second due east. Okay, straight parallel banks, head upstream in a direction making a 60 degree angle with the bank. Okay, find its resultant velocity. Okay, now as you read, you always filter out the information. So, like we were talking about the three sides of the triangle, first and foremost, we know that the canoe is relative to the water. Okay, is equal to 1 meters per second. Okay, isn't it? So, so this is the first information that we know of. Okay. Um, the next one we know is that uh, well the river is flowing at a um, speed of 1.5 so river will be of course our VW which is our water okay so it's 1.5 meters per second decimal point here okay so this is the water now and then the next thing is okay what we're missing here we're missing the actual velocity isn't it the actual direction the actual speed okay and then precisely that's the job here I'm supposed to find that okay the next most important thing to do is to have an idea of how the question is uh, looking like okay meaning to say uh, literally uh, get the graphical representation of this question okay we have a river okay 20 meters wide Okay, so this is our 20 meters wide. Alright, um, the river is flowing due east, therefore due east means um, in this direction, towards the right. Okay, due east, towards east. Alright, so this is the river current, so you know that the river is flowing down this way. Okay, now, of course, you must be uh, from one bank and you're trying to swim over to the other bank, isn't it? So, let's say you are at this point here. Okay, now you want to swim across because you want to uh, cross the river. Okay, now, but where is your aiming? Where is the steering? Okay, you head upstream, that means you steer yourself upstream in the direction making an angle of 60 degrees with the bank. So, upstream means against the current, so you know that the current is flowing down this way, so you know that you are actually aiming upwards. Okay, so this becomes your aiming vector, which is your relative vector, which is your V, C, W. Okay, so this vector is also, we know, 1 meters per second, isn't it? As per what we have discussed earlier on, the velocity relative to the water, which is um, the relative velocity, is also the steering vector. Okay, so the velocity of the canoe, uh, or rather the canoe is relative to the water is also the steering vector okay so this is your aiming you aim this way now water is flowing down this way so where, where do you think end up do you think end up here or do you think end up exactly here at this point or do you think it end up here or here okay all these are possibilities and that is why the concept comes in very very important okay you must then realize that the wind sorry not wind the water it's flowing down this way, it's impossible for you to reach here. Neither is it possible for you to reach exactly at this point, right? Unless it's still water and there's no current, you, yes, you'll reach here. So no, no, where would you reach? Okay, now the idea is this, you will reach somewhere here. Okay, now then you may ask, Hey, how come reach here? Why cannot reach here? Okay, so this is where your diagram comes in very, very importantly. You need to know that um, your diagram has to carry a certain sense of scale to it. Okay, in a sense that if this vector were to represent one meter per second, all right, you need a longer vector to represent one point five meter per second. Okay, is that clear? I think it's very logical as well. Okay, the faster you are, the longer the vector. That's it. Okay, so just remember it this way. That is why it is impossible for your canoe to end up here. Okay, why not possible? Well, because this vector can't possibly be your water. 
because the water is supposed to be 1.5 while your aiming is supposed to be 1 so this is obviously way shorter than your aiming isn't it so so you know that no no way your your boat or I'm sorry your canoe is going to reach here okay because the the vector representing the water will have to be way longer in fact 1.5 times longer okay so and therefore this has to uh, come all the way down here you end up here okay so I hope that is clear so this is your final destination you'll reach here so let's fill in the blanks okay what I mean fill in the blanks you have to put in arrows isn't it I mean you got to label your sides of the triangle this is very important believe me um, because ultimately your teacher will mark according to your diagram okay so uh, you you is um, very very important that you get the diagrams right with the right arrows facing the right direction with the right numbers okay the right labeling alright so now this is VW of course because this is of course the water isn't it okay the river current that's flowing down at 1.5 meters per second okay now of course that leaves us with what is this our VC isn't it the actual path of your canoe okay so again um, the kind of concept that we've been talking about okay if you aim your canoe this way and there's a strong current flowing downwards this way alright you will end up somewhere here okay so it's a very simple kind of uh, concept to graphs I, I think okay so now what is your job your job is to find the resultant velocity which means that you're supposed to find the speed okay of this vector alright so we we'll call this x alright x meters per second sorry this not very nice x here x meters per seconds okay representing this uh, actual speed that we have now okay so you stare at a triangle and you go like okay good now I have a triangle I know this side is 1.5 meters per second I know that this side is 1 meter per second how am I going to find the x okay now the important thing that you have to slowly get into you know internalize into your head is this every time you draw a picture I mean you draw a triangle you labor okay you make sure that the logic makes sense the concept makes sense well you aim here river flowing here you, you end up here yeah okay makes sense correct okay so you have to check that it makes sense and now you have to find an angle inside the triangle this is very 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 important because without the angle inside the triangle you are basically running blind you can't solve for any sides or any angles at all okay so now is the time that we look out for an angle inside the triangle so we read the information then we go oh here here we go we have a 60 degrees somewhere here mentioned what is this 60 degrees this 60 degrees is the direction that he hits upstream okay and that of course refers to this angle here being 60 degrees All right? because this is your aiming so you hit upstream at an angle of 60 degrees with the bank okay so this is 60 degrees but this 60 degrees is outside of the triangle so it's still quite useless but uh, yep because it's parallel banks therefore we managed to squeeze the 60 degrees into the triangle this way okay so this is as well a uh, 60 degrees okay so here we are alright we'll have a um, triangle with an angle inside okay and uh, a few sides that we know of so to find x here is no longer a problem because simply use the cosine rule so using cosine rule you know that your x square is equal to 1.5 square plus 1 square minus 2 multiplied by 1.5 right multiplied by 1 cosine 60 degrees okay so from your calculator you should have no problem getting x okay all right don't forget to square root I have seen a lot of uh, careless mistakes due to the fact that they forgot to square root after that okay so you should get 1.32 meters per second from a calculator this is calculator works so no problem with that alright so we have solved the first part of the question well almost what do I mean by almost they're asking for velocity we got a speed and there we go now always bear in mind that velocity represents speed as well as direction so you have to tell um, the examiner or answer the question fully okay so you have to also give the bearing of um, your this vector VC okay so how to find the bearing of this VC well the bearing of BC of course will be measured from north okay so we draw a north and 
And here we go. This is the angle that we are interested in to find. All right. Now, one thing I want to highlight to um, you guys is this. Now, let's say you have a vector pointing in this direction. Okay. Now, the bearing will be okay. You draw a north, and then you all right um, sketch. Okay, and then sketch a north pole, and and there we go. This is a this is the bearing that we're talking about for this vector. Okay. Now. What I want to highlight to you is this: same vector, opposite direction. Okay, the bearing is totally different now. See, see. So for this vector, this bearing is this angle. Okay, the bearing for this vector is this angle. So as you can see, both of them are parallel. Okay, but bearings are different. So you need to bear in mind that to measure any bearing of any vector, you have to go to the tail of the arrow. Okay, every every vector looks like an arrow. All right, so there's a direction. You go to the to the tail of the arrow, draw a north, and there you go. That's the angle that you need. Okay, so in our case here, the VC, all right, is our vector here is pointing upwards. So the tail of the arrow is here. So this is the bearing that we're interested in. Okay, so how do we find this angle here? We use the sine rule. Okay, because now when you take a look at this triangle here. Alright, now we got this 60 degrees, and we do know the x directly opposite. Okay, we know that this is uh, 1.5, and we can find, we can actually use the sine rule to find this angle here. Okay, so let's call this angle theta, and by uh, using the sine rule, you know that 1.5, okay, over, oops, that's not very nice, over sine theta, okay, is equal to 1.32 over sine 60 degrees. Okay, so this is a sine rule, isn't it? So when you cross multiply and you um, sine inverse and all, you know, from the calculator work, you get your theta as 79.78 degrees. Okay, so this is theta. Now, then you must be clear that this theta is not the bearing of the VC. Why not? Well, because this theta is actually this angle here, isn't it? Okay, let me just highlight you using the color. So it's actually this angle here. This is our theta. Okay? So no way. We're not interested in this, right? We're interested in the shaded angle, right? So how are we going to find the shaded angle when we know the theta? Well, it's actually quite easy. Okay? So let me just highlight to you again. Now, this is north and uh, this is um, east-west. Okay, well, because um, the water is flowing due east, so it has to be east west, and therefore this is perpendicular. So if this were to be 60 degrees, and therefore this has to be 30 degrees, isn't it? Okay, so to find our bearing that we need is now very easy, isn't it? So the bearing, okay, of our VC will be simply 79.78 degrees minus 30 degrees okay so from here we get 49.78 degrees and this would be our bearing for the VC okay and this concludes the first part which is part A of our answer okay so let's move on to part B now part B asks us to find the time taken for the crossing to the nearest seconds so time taken to the nearest uh, uh, to for the crossing. That means time taken for you to come from this point to this point. Alright? So, how do we do that? Well, we need some more space for sure. So, let's. Uh, okay, good. Okay, now part B. Uh, let's start from somewhere here. Now, what we learned since our primary school days was that to find time, okay, we need distance to divide by speed. Okay? So, this formula still works here. It's still the same thing. So to find the time taken, uh, or rather the time needed to, to for the crossing, okay, we need to know how far we are actually crossing and uh, the speed that which uh, we are crossing at. Okay, the, the speed that we are actually crossing the river is 1.32. Is part A's answer, right? This is actual speed. Okay. Anyway, this vector is actual vector. Remember, so uh, actual vector represent actual speed, actual distance, actual everything. Okay. So this is the actual distance that we will be traveling. So now we need the distance, the actual distance that we're traveling, right? So we need to know we need to find a distance somewhere because so far what we we've dealt with are all the speeds, right? So now we need to find distance. Okay. Here we go. We have a 20 meters here. 
All right. Now, it is very, very important, or rather, very um, it's a very common error when people first learn. They they mix up distance with speed. Okay, so never, never, never mix up distance with speed. When you use speed, you will get speed as the answer. Okay, so like here, we use speed to find speed. Okay, so now we want to find distance. We cannot use speed to help us find distance, right? We have to use distance to help us find distance. Okay, so why am I babbling about all this? Well, first of all, you want to find this distance. Okay, now take a look at this. Um, there's a right angle triangle there, isn't it? Okay, so I just use red color so you can see this right angle triangle more uh, prominently. So this is a right angle triangle. Okay, of which you know that the 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 width of the river is 20 meters, and uh, you just found out that theta, the value of theta, the value of this angle is 60 degrees, and therefore, to find this angle here shouldn't be too much of a headache. It's just 180 degrees minus away 79.78, and then minus away um, 60 degrees. Okay, so from the calculator you will get 40.22 degrees. Okay, for this uh, little red angle here. Right, and you do know this side here, the opposite side here is 20 meters, and therefore to find the hypotenuse side, okay, simply, um, you know, your trigo, right, your tocaso. So it's this opposite over hypotenuse, so you use sine, right? So you sine 40.22 degrees is equal to 20 over y. Okay, so I just call this y meters. Okay, it looks rather messy right now okay because it's small uh, i wish i would uh, I, I mean i i have drawn drawn it bigger but okay never mind i think you can follow still okay so from here um you know cross multiply you get a y right so you cross multiply from the calculator work again you get 30.97 meters okay so what does this distance represent well this rep this distance represent the actual distance that you are actually traveling Okay, the actual distance you are covering. So to find the actual time that you are actually traveling, so time, okay, will be of course the distance 30.97. There's a point here, 30.97. Divide by the actual speed. Okay, so the actual speed is 1.32 meters per second, and therefore you will get um, 23.46 seconds. And therefore, when rounded to the nearest seconds, is 23 seconds. Okay, so this will be your answer here.